Prince was and continues to be a modern day sage. And anyone who calls themselves a Prince fan, friend, or fam is a student of Prince. Let me explain. Hey everybody, welcome back to Princess Friend. I am your host, Princess Friend. Today's video is actually a serious one. It means a lot to me personally. I've said before on here that I've learned a lot of life lessons from Prince through his music, through his creativity, through his persona, but I really wanted to explain myself further. I wanted to show the world how Prince was a modern day sage. Now I'm gonna be breaking this conversation up into a few different pieces. I'm gonna definitely define what a sage is. Then I'm gonna give you a little bit of evidence as to why I believe Prince is a sage. We're gonna get into some of Prince's methodology and his messages, and then I'll have a bunch of final thoughts. If you dig this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications bell so that you are always alerted to new videos from Prince's friend. We put out new ones every week. Sometimes they're big ones like this one, but let's dive into this. So the dictionary defines sage as a profoundly wise person, especially one who features in ancient history or legend. The ancient Greeks narrowed this down even further, saying a sage is someone who has attained the wisdom which a philosopher seeks. Now a philosopher is a term that we hear a lot. It's the term for somebody who seeks wisdom, but a sage is somebody who lives according to the ideals that transcend the everyday. The sage can do philosophy, but not every philosopher is a sage. A sage is linked to self-cultivation and the striving for balance, harmoniousness, and human perfection. A sage's thinking is concerned with the relationship of themselves and with other human beings, and the relationships of human beings with the greater order of all things. In short, a philosopher is theorizing about how to live whereas a sage already knows what they want and they live their life to attain such things. To further define the term sage, there are four major aspects that make someone a sage. One is transforming fear into prudence. This means learning how to assess a situation and turn any apprehension into an opportunity to choose your best course forward without fear, but with a little bit of temperance. Number two, transforming pain into information. Learning from your mistakes is a well-known concept, and it's one of the pillars that make up what a sage is. They've had some sort of experience that they've had to learn from and can now impart that wisdom to others. Number three, transforming mistakes into initiation. Some say that knowledge is power, but actually it's not true. Knowledge plus action is power. You need to learn from your mistakes and need to act on those lessons learned. Essentially, a sage's actions must also align with what they teach. And number four, transforming desire into undertaking. You have to know what it is that you want and go for it. There are a million people who have dreams, but as Prince once said, nothing comes from dreamers but dreams. And that's just one life lesson from Prince that I have for you. Prince knew in his heart what his path would end up being. And I am, and truthfully anyone who truly seeks to learn Prince's teachings, are students of Prince, much like how all of the sages of history took on apprentices. Now I want to preface this next section by saying that being a sage has nothing to do with organized religion. So even as I mentioned some historical sages that are linked to religion, they should be viewed through a philosophical and a sagely lens and not through one based on religion. So Jesus from the Christian faith had his 12 disciples. He was a sage and took on students, just the same as Confucius, an ancient Chinese politician, teacher, and philosopher also did. However, Confucius took on over 3,000 students in his lifetime, but only about 75 or so learned all that he had to teach. The third sage that I want to cover is 19th century German cultural critic, poet, and philologist Nietzsche. He wrote his wisdom into books so they could be read, and he reached thousands of people in his writings. 
Prince, on the other hand, composed beautiful works that contained his messages and released them to millions, giving him a larger, more international range in a shorter amount of time, just due to modern convenience. Prince connected with every age, race, religion, and culture through escapism, entertainment, showmanship, and his art. But ultimately, he was about sharing and receiving love. Some of the people danced, had fun with his creations, while others like myself took a deep look at his meanings, his messages, and his intent. And even though Prince's messages weren't all hidden, he does click with only a small number of people, evidenced by how many of us, as Prince friends, felt isolated in our fandom, like we were the only ones who got it. But even if you say only 5% of the people who hear him understand his message, and he sold over 150 million albums, that is a lot of people who have subscribed to the teachings of Prince, becoming his students. Some know what they're getting into, and for others, it just jumps up and grabs them. When I heard Prince, like really heard Prince, I was hooked. I just started buying his albums, transcribing his lyrics so that I could fully understand them. I started learning the lessons that he was giving. So you have to imagine me as an 11 year old little boy with my little yellow notebook, listening to pieces of music over and over again, certain lyrics, trying to get them right, trying to understand not only what he was saying, but why he was saying it. I just had to know all of it. And this is the power of Prince as a sage. And on a side note, I know some people will say that Prince can't be a sage because he was just preaching Christian teachings, but one doesn't necessarily exclude the other. As a matter of fact, we know that Jesus Christ was Jewish and that actually Confucius was deep in the Taoism. The thing about a sage is that their teachings are about how to live your life today. The afterlife, it's its own thing. And since Prince's teachings are about how to approach your life in today's world, he's a sage. He also had a lot to add to the conversation and was not just repeating stuff. So what I'm gonna share with you right now are some really well-known sayings from some of the other sages that I mentioned. From Confucius, I have, the man who says he can and the man who says he cannot are both correct. If you are the smartest person in the room, then you are in the wrong room. Wherever you go, go with all of your heart. Nietzsche wrote, without music, life would be a mistake. That which does not kill us makes us stronger. Whoever fights monsters should see to it that in the process he does not become a monster. And if you gaze long enough into the abyss, the abyss will gaze back into you. From Jesus, if you bring forth the genius within you, it will free you. If you do not bring forth the genius within you, it will destroy you. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven, for he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and unjust alike. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your great works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now these three sages have amazing quotes, amazing lessons to learn in their sayings. But they don't really differ that much from what Prince was teaching as well. Let's go through some of his notable lyrics. Life is just a party and parties weren't meant to last. A lesson on not fearing death. You have to live a good life today. No child is bad from the beginning. They just imitate their atmosphere, which is a lesson that we need to take care on how we raise the next generation. The best remedy for a pocket full of lies is the funk. You just keep doing what you're doing. The haters are gonna hate. You should never underestimate the power of a kiss on the neck when she doesn't expect. One of many lessons that Prince taught on how to show love. Admission is easy. Just say you believe and come to this place in your heart. It's about coming together and acknowledging the happiness that lives inside of you and using that to join with other people of like mind. We're in the middle of the here, never mind the past. You should forget your past regrets and past celebrations. It's all about what you're doing today and moving forward. From some cool Prince interviews, there's a few really good ones. A strong spirit transcends rules. A lot of the time, Prince was called a rules breaker, but really he was making it necessary to make new rules. Compassion is an action word with no boundaries. 
You should show love to everybody. Despite everything, no one can dictate who you are to other people. You're always going to have others trying to tell you who you are. Prince teaches us that you have to accept who you are and be proud of that. Like books and black lives, albums matter. Prince said this as he was presenting an award for best album. It teaches us to use whatever platform we have to spread the truth, even if it's something other people don't want to hear. So I see very little difference between the old sages and Prince's teachings, except that while they had access to thousands, he had access to millions of potential students. Confucius taught about how to be a paragon among humanity. In Chinese, this is called junsi, a term that Confucius used to describe the ideal man. The best version of yourself, so others could see what it was like and follow. And Prince did very much the same thing. He wore what he wanted to, he did his hair the way he wanted to, he talked and acted the way that was truest to himself. He bucked conventions of the things that we knew and were comfortable with, and forced people to think differently, challenged society to examine itself by always experimenting and always going counter to what is expected. When he felt his record label wasn't being fair, he fought against them. His words at that time are strong. He was quoted as saying, if you don't own your masters, then the master owns you. But he also lived this truth. He wrote slave on his face. He changed his name to fight against what he felt was immoral. He did all that and invited us to come along with him. It wasn't just words. Later in Prince's life, he also became quite a bit of a soothsayer. Now in the old days, these were people who were believed to be able to see the future. But in the modern era, they're more like canaries in the coal mines, cultural critics like Nietzsche. They are the ones examining society and telling us what's wrong with the world today. They paint a picture of where we are and what will happen if we don't make a change. Prince did this in plenty of his songs, such as Sign of the Times, Dear Mr. Man, Fix Your Life Up, United States of Division, America, Colonize Mind, the list goes on and on. These songs spurred people to start a discussion, trying to push people to change as only a sage could. The entire idea is that you would take the sage's teachings and you implement them in your own life. And if enough of us did that, then that changes society. I'd argue that Prince did a lot to change life as we know it. He lived as a paragon of the creator archetype, and I personally followed many of his examples, as I know many of you did as well. He taught me that you have to find a creative outlet in life, and you have to become it. You have to allow it to consume you. He is quoted as saying, I am a musician, and I am music because it wasn't just a job to him. He felt a compulsion to create, and he couldn't stop himself even if he tried. I found many creative things in my life, from my writing to doing this channel here that you're currently watching. In everything I do, I throw myself into it deep, and I become that thing. I don't really have a choice. It takes me over. If I ever get the urge to half-ass something, I just stop. It's not worth my time if it's not going to become a part of my being. This applies to relationships as well, as being vulnerable and honest with whoever your partner is, is a huge part of Prince's message. He also taught the importance of music, similar to Nietzsche, and he showed us the best of what we could hope to attain using it, to bring joy even if only for a short time. And that's why it doesn't make sense when people say Prince wasn't successful. Fame is not the end goal. Album sales and money weren't the final goal. It wasn't sex or drugs or friends or anything. Success was doing the thing that you were put on earth to do and using that to change the world. And that thing is very different to many different people. It doesn't have to be music. For one person, it might be accounting where math and numbers just gets them jazzed and they just can't wait until the next tax season. For another, it might be something like being a plumber, where pipes and water and the craft just makes the engineer mind tick. It's awesome when you see somebody in their element, and this is something that Prince always talked about. But remember what I said about prudence. It's knowing how much is enough and when to say no. 
The thing about Prince is that he was a paragon. He was an embodiment of what it meant to be music. But also a lesson that throwing yourself entirely into a single thing can be dangerous. Learning by watching his successes and his failures teaches us by example how to create a balance that he simply wasn't capable of attaining. He is music, and he couldn't be anything other than that. I also feel like there needs to be some discussion of the man versus the message. I've been doing this channel for a while now, and I've been delving even deeper than I ever had before as a simple student into the history of this man that we call Prince. And lots of things have been uncovered. And that is one of the foundational things about a sage. No matter how larger than life they may seem, in the end, they are human beings. They aren't a messiah, or they're not a prophet, they're not a saint, or a divine messenger. Despite any faults that they may have personally, they have discovered the key to living a good life. This does at times create a do as I say and not as I do kind of situation, which works for some and not for others. On my channel, I don't shy away from calling out possibly negative things that I might find in Prince's background because I'm able to divorce the man who likely had a ton of flaws that we'll never even know about. From the messages that he taught, like love for one another and be everything that you can be in this world. This was another lesson that Prince taught to me through his action. You must project the image that you want the world to see, because that is who will sway whoever is watching. And I was swayed wholeheartedly by Prince every day of my life. So with all of that said, I want to send a prayer, a spiritual message, whatever you want to call it. I want to send it across the cosmos to the heavens, to the afterlife, and I hope that they reach Prince. What I want to say is, thank you. You, Prince, taught me how to be a man, how to treat others, how to handle life's struggles, how to have confidence in myself how to better understand myself, how to be a better human, how to love. You were my best friend, you were my sage, and I'll always continue to be a student of Prince until the day that I die. I love you, we all love you, and we miss you. Whew, wow, that was a big one. I had a lot of fun doing this video. I really hope that you did, and I want to discuss your thoughts of Prince being a modern day sage down in the comments. I do want to share that we now have Student of Prince shirts that you can purchase if you want to show off to the world that you are a student of Prince and you agree with the stuff that I've said in this video, you're definitely going to want to grab one of these. Otherwise, don't forget to hit us up on social media. Twitter and Instagram are both at PrincessFriendYT. We are also always looking for more support through our Patreon at patreon.com slash princessfriend. We love our patrons as they've taken that next step to really support the channel directly, and every little bit helps us grow with new equipment, allowing us to travel to different places, giving us more opportunities to bring you amazing content here on the channel. And as always, may you live to see the dawn. I love you all.